Good day everyone, it is I, Sir Review, um, and I am filming my second movie review, and I have been like thinking of different movies that I was planning on reviewing this weekend, but nothing came to mind, so I was going through um, my Amazon account to see if I could look, find any movies that I could watch, and um, my parents found a movie called um, Victor Frankenstein, and they were wondering if I wanted to watch it with them. And I was like, sure, why not? It seems like a good movie. And, well, when I, um, when I started, um, watching it, it actually got very intriguing. And I was actually kind of surprised I'd never heard of this movie before. Um, it has Daniel Radcliffe, um, same guy who played as Harry Potter, and James McAvoy in it. And it also has the same guy, I don't know who... Um, I don't know who the name of the actor is, but he's the same guy who plays as, um, Moriarty in, um, the Sherlock Holmes show. Um, the, the one with, um, uh, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wa we started watching a movie, and today I'm going to be reviewing that movie, because it was actually a lot better than I was expecting. I was expecting it just to be this other you know, Frankenstein movie that's just all about the monster. But to be perfectly honest, it actually was, wasn't was even mostly about the monster, rather than the actual scientist himself. So, we're, I'm going to be talking about the movie, I'm going to be talking first about the good things about it, and then some of the criticisms I had about it. So let's just dive right in. And just so you know, this, this does contain spoilers regarding the movie, so if you haven't seen the movie and you're planning on watching it, and you don't want it spoiled for you, Click away as soon as possible, because I am getting ready to spoil in 3, 2, 1. So the movie opens up, um, narrated by um, Daniel Radcliffe's character, who is actually Igor. And the, their, their take on Igor was a lot different, and I'll get to that in a minute. So it opens up with him, you know, being the typical hunchback Igor, and they, he was a part of a circus, as, like, as, the, as the clown who always gets beat up and stuff. And... Sure enough, um, immediately I was like, well, Daniel Radcliffe, I already love his character. He's, he's so considerate about others, he's, he, he, he delivers it so well. And the thing is, whenever I think of some characters, like, every time I've ever thought of Emma Watson, until Beauty and the Beast, I've always just thought of her as just Hermione. I could never see her as anyone else. And I was almost thinking the same thing about Daniel Radcliffe until I saw this movie. Then I was thinking... I don't see Harry Potter anymore. I just see a new character that he's being in. And that's what I love about this. How he delivers his performance so well. Both of them do. Both he and James McAvoy do a spectacular job in their performance. So, it opens with him being, you know, the hunchback. And he's in a circus getting beat up. And he, I don't know, I don't know, I don't exactly remember how he instantly gets involved in this. But he, he, he starts to, um develop, um, a passion for, um, you know, anatomy and human, like, phys physiology, and how he's starting to become more and more like a, a doctor and, uh, in, in his own mind, but everyone at the circus is like, no, you're just a clown, you're never gonna be one of, you're never gonna be a smart doctor ever, ever, your, your place is here, you're just a hunchback, you're not gonna be anything special. That all changes when one day, this girl, of course, he, he, he likes her, and, she um gets hurt because she's a she's a, a trapeze she's a she's one of the acrobats and um she's her wire snaps and she falls and then she breaks her collarbone and conveniently guess who was there at that exact same time James McAvoy's character Victor Frankenstein and uh, one uh, immediately when I saw him I was thinking this is spot on I can't picture anyone else being such an awesome you know scientist character. I mean, I just think James McAvoy can just, I think if he's born to do any kind of role, he's born to to play as any kind of scientist or any kind of, you know, professor like Charles Xavier and X-Men. I, I just think he did such a good job. And so this is where he and um, Igor meet. His original name's not Igor. He didn't really have a name. Um, he just calls him Igor when he finds him. And they, um... They're trying to help out this lady who's who got hurt, and 
you know, they're like, I don't know what we can do to save her. She's she's running out of breath. And then Igor says, oh, she, she her collarbone's broken. I need to fix it. And and Victor Frankenstein's like, no, that, that can't happen. And then he says, give me your pocket watch. I know how to save her. So he takes the pocket watch, jabs it into her sh into her um, shoulder right here, um, re releasing the collarbone, and she's able to breathe again. So they rush her to the um, whatever passes at the hospital, where the, wherever they were. And um, then Victor Frankenstein's like, oh my gosh, man, you're incredible. Just the kind of person I'm looking for. And he said, no, no, I'm just a clown. I, I don't belong anywhere else. He's like, that's where you're wrong. And then he just, and he leaves and he's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm, I'm Victor Frankenstein. And then the title card shows up and it's all cool and stuff. And then later you see, you know, they're, they're bullying um, Igor again. And they're telling him again that you'll never be a scientist and your place is here with the circus because you're a nobody. And Victor Frankenstein comes, breaks him out. And they escape from the circus, barely. And so they eventually go back to where Victor Frankenstein lives. And um, then Victor Frankenstein does something that I never expected that would ever happen in this film. Because I thought Igor was just going to remain the typical hunchback he was. But this is where it gets interesting. Victor um, grabs Igor and, and tells him that, that he's a hunchback because of the fluid. He has fluid buildup in his back and his... And his spine is now arched over because of it. So he takes the fluid out of Igor's back, snaps his back like into place again, and then straps a straps a thing that like to keep his spine nice and straight in order to keep him from hunching over again. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is definitely a new take on the actual, you know, Igor we always knew. We always thought of Igor as just this dumb hunchback who would just do whatever the the the, the scientist does, but he's actually just as smart as the professor himself. In fact, maybe even smarter. And he's and he eventually finds out that Victor Frankenstein is planning something because he keeps going into this basement area, and so he always he's always thinking to himself, you know, what where, where what's he doing? And then Victor finally tells him. I'm planning on doing something very special. Come with me. And he shows him these sets, two sets of what look like lion eyes sitting in like a, like some sort of fluid, like a jar of fluid. And he takes this thing that he calls a Lazarus rod and he puts it right on top, winds, winds up a crank and the electricity starts going from the rod into the, into the fluid, immediately causing the eyes to open and they actually react to like a little flame that he waves right in front of it and he's saying I am tr I am planning on creating life out of nothing and and meanwhile you see this um the the Moriarty guy I'm calling him that because I don't know the main characters I mean I don't know that actor's name so I'm calling him the Moriarty guy he plays as a as a very religious um inspector who is inspecting the circus to see um you know, who this um, maniac who freed the hunchback was, and he starts to have a feeling that this, that this guy is up to something. And so he's, he's, he starts to, like, think that, you know, he's up to something very bad and against the Christian religion, and he's determined to figure out what it is. So, Victor Frankenstein and um, Igor spend, spend a lot of their time, you know, studying, gathering as many animal parts as they can for the little experiment that Victor is um, doing in his basement. And they eventually say to themselves, we deserve a break. We deserve a little um, time to interact with other people. So they go to this party where Igor runs into the, to, to the girl he saved. And they start to interact. They start to actually talk about, you know, he and, Fra he and Frankenstein start to discuss with her, you know, their work and what they're planning on doing. And at first she does either doesn't believe them or think they're just crazy because she's like, no, 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 that just can't happen. Until they actually start getting deeper and deeper into the explanation, she actually starts to realize what they're, that they're actually dead serious. And she's kind of concerned because she doesn't know, you know, where this could lead. So he and, so he and Igor get back to their work. And 
you you see a bit more de way more development growing within these two seeing how they like they work mutually together and he, he and he even says you're not just an assistant igor you are my partner which is even cooler because you know you just never would picture igor as more than just a, a hunchback assistant but in this movie they make him even more than that they just make him um a partner a very smart partner mind you just like they, 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 they get, I, the only way I can compare it to is Sherlock Holmes. It just has that Sherlock Holmes vibe to it. Like, like in a sense, Victor Frankenstein is a detective, even though he's, he's just a scientist in this. But he seems like the detective Sherlock Holmes, and Igor is the um, Dr. Watson, who is smart, but just kind of there. And so they're, they're working and working until Victor says, okay, it's about time I've shown you what I'm planning on creating. So he shows them this, what he, I don't know, I forgot what he called it, but he called it um, some sort of animal creature. It had like the parts of all, a bunch of animals. It had the head of a, of like a, an ape. It had like the legs of a, of a dog. It had the front legs of a horse. It was crazy. It was really, really weird. And I was thinking, okay, if this is the actual Frankenstein monster, I, I might not be with this, but it, it turns out it wasn't because I had checked and, um, it, w it wasn't even halfway through, so I was thinking, okay, they wouldn't bring in a monster this early, so this is probably just a prototype thing. And sure enough, it was, because um, they wind up taking it to this, um, to this college where they um, plan on um, showing it off to a bunch of other scientists. At first, it doesn't work. They try to use a Lazarus rod. It doesn't work. The animal's not coming to life like it was earlier until they finally give it so much power to where it, it, it immediately wakes up stands up and starts going on a rampage all throughout the college so they're trying to catch it and when they do they wind up having to kill it and go back to square one and surprisingly an another scientist at that college wants them to build another one in order to show the world what they can do and he was going to fi finance what they were planning on doing so he he's like one of the richest people in london he was like if you can create another one, I will finance all this for you. And they're like, okay, sounds good. And at first, you know, Igor was like, no, no, no. We can't do that again. You saw what this thing can do. Just imagine if we made something bigger than that, it would be much worse. But Victor finally tells them, like, you know, this isn't just that. This is about bringing something new to the realm of science. This, is, this completely changes the face of any religion out there. And that's the main thing that the Moriarty character is against because the inspector is full Christian and he thinks that this is the work of the devil itself. And he's determined to figure out what's going on and how to stop it. Well, um, they're finding, they're trying to think of a new way to do it and, they, and then Victor finally has this revelation. He's like, what if we made a man? A living, breathing man. And he'd be like, well, th that's going to be hard because... Um, we, we can't find, in, we can't, it, like, the physiology of a human cannot be brought back with just a normal human. But he's like, no, what if it were bigger, smarter, and, you know, better? And, and they're like, so they're planning on making a, a human out of nothing, except bigger. It has, four, it would have four hearts, it would have, I mean, sorry, two hearts, four lungs. It would be twice the size of a normal human. And... They're working together on this, and Victor tells Igor, "You deserve a break. You deserve some time off to rest. Um, just go out. Um, go with that. Li let's go with that girl you like. I'll be fine. I can take care of everything by myself." And the ins and um, he goes and talks to um, the girl he likes. I forgot it's, her name starts with an L. I think her name is Laurelie or Laureline. I don't know. I'm gonna call her Laureline. Um, he talks to Laureline and she tells him. Victor's crazy. He doesn't know what he's up against. This is not something that anyone should tamper with. It's it's against the laws of nature. And Igor's like, you're right, but I can't try and stop him. There's no sense of talking to him. He won't listen. And she says, well, maybe he won't listen to you. And then Igor says, okay, well, if I have no other choice. And then he brings in Victor's father, who always said, you're a disappointment. You're, no you're nothing like your older brother. If you were more like your older brother, maybe I would be more proud of you. And this completely just destroys Victor. And Victor's just like, I'll prove him wrong. I can prove them all wrong. 
and later, um, Igor is going to get some stuff for, um, Victor, and when he gets back, you see the, the inspector and a bunch of other police and, and like, all the Scotland Yard guys just, like, trying to break into, um, the, um, their house, and Igor tries to find that, finds the secret entrance in and tells them, we gotta get out of here, Victor, we just have to get out of here, and Victor's like, no, it's almost complete, we're almost done, and then the inspector comes in, brings out his gun, he's like, enough, you have to stop this. This is against what God planned. And he's like, and then Victor says, There is no God. There has never been a God. This is just, you know, baloney. Now, I would criticize the fact that they are, like, insulting the Christian religion, but they aren't. It's just a part of the story. It's just basically what Victor thinks. It's not really trying to make a point out to any religious people out there saying, you know, if there, if there is any re religious people out there, they wouldn't be saying, um, hey, your religion is wrong, and all that. No, this is just from Victor's point of view. It's not the movie's point of view. It's clearly taken from the point of view of Victor and what he thinks of it. And they're not making a, like, this inspector, like, one of those Christians who's like, oh my gosh, if you're of any other religion or any of that, you're pure evil. No, no. He works, he works, his, his partner, actually, is an atheist, and he works fine with that, with that dude, and, and and they just work with just fine with each other. It's pretty cool. So, Victor, if I had enough, he um, knocks out the the inspector and they escape. They escape to the, the mansion of that other scientist who was going to finance their stuff. And then Igor finally has enough and he's like, Enough, Victor. Enough. We can't do this. This is not what we were supposed to do. This is against what nature has us ready. This is against nature. This is just against everything that's right in the world. And then he finally tells Victor, it was your brother who was stuck in the storm, wasn't it? Because they said, they kept mentioning something about a storm and, and like that Victor was with someone else during the storm. And then Igor finally starts to think, it was his brother, wasn't it? It was his brother who was stuck in the storm with him and his brother died while Victor lived. And... And Victor's like, exactly. And and then he just leaves. And he takes a coach and just goes. Meanwhile, he's... Igor's just there with the other scientists. And the other scientist is like, Forget him. You're fine on your own. You could do whatever you want. And then he... And, then, and that was kind of ironic because he actually... Right after he says that, he snaps his fingers and then two guys kidnap him. And um, he tells him, I'm sorry, Igor. I'm sorry I had to come to this, but to being just the richest person in London isn't enough. I want to be known as something. I want to be known with something true. I want to be known for something that actually matters other than wealth. I want to be known to create something. So, so he's basically saying, I'm going to make Victor create this man somehow. This is going to happen somehow. That's basically what he's telling Igor. So he throws Igor into the river and Igor manages, manages to free himself and get to the surface and he tries to, and he and, he and, the, and Loreline are like, this can't go on any longer, we have to stop Victor, we just have to. So they leave and they head to, to, the, to this castle off the coast. And this is where things get really cool. Because um, when they get there, they see everyone, you know, putting the monster together, they're putting all the body parts together. And then they cover him up with the claws and get ready to, um, like, um, like crank him all the way up to the to the sky where when the storm is getting ready to pass overhead. And then, Igor finally confronts Victor, and and this is this is a different take too because in the in the old Frankenstein movies it was just Victor working by himself. This time he has a bunch of other scientists to back him up along with the the very rich scientist who's saying. It's, it's time the, that London knows what life can really be like and how we can truly make life um, happen. So, they get, so they're getting ready to charge. They're, get, they're waiting for the storm to, get to, to, to arrive. And Igor's like, it's time. I have to confront Victor. So he, he confronts Victor and he tells him, Victor, I know what you feel. You feel, you feel like that 
everyone else is going to feel the exact same pain you did when you lost your brother. And you don't want anyone else to feel that. And Victor's like, no, that's not what I feel. I feel responsible for my brother's death. And this, this can make him live again. This is, this is going to prove that there is life after death. And, and it's not in the religious standpoint. He's just saying, like, there can be life after death. There can be someone being brought back to life after they die. And he wants to prove that, you know, his brother isn't truly gone. And he's living in that delusion that, you know, if he brings this thing back to life, his brother will still be alive and all that. And he goes out there and actually creates the monster. Not until the, uh, up until the inspector comes in and ruins everything. He basically says, this isn't right. This is Satan's work. This is exactly what we're trying to stop here. And Victor says, for the last time, this is nature at its best. And then they both look over and they see that the monster is gone. It's out of the cage and you see it just stand up. And this is, I wouldn't say this monster was necessarily a letdown, but it wasn't exactly the type of Frankenstein monster you would expect. It didn't have the hair thing. It didn't have those screws in its neck. It looked like just a giant creature with sewn parts to him, which isn't bad. Okay, I gotta admit. For being a modern day movie about Frankenstein, it's actually impressive, but I just think they could have made him look more human than he already did. Because that thing did not look anything like a resurrected man with a bunch of other human body parts connected to him. And But it was big, it, it was very big, it fit the, you know, scary monster persona. And then Victor finally approaches the monster and he says, Brother. It's me. Can't you see me? And he's living in the delusion that this is his brother resurrected. And he's, he finally comes to his senses because he's reaching up to touch this thing's face. And then he's like, this isn't life. This isn't right. This isn't, this isn't what is meant to, this isn't what is supposed to be done. And he finally says, I can't do this. And he, and he says, I, I, I just can't. I, I can't bear to see this continue. And then, the, and then the inspector says, okay, that's enough. And he shoots the creature and the monster just loses it. And then they have this epic showdown with the inspector and the, um, the scientists and all those guys just fighting this monster. And then at the very climax, it's kind of a weird thing. They finally kill the monster by stabbing it in both its hearts, killing it. And then Igor was knocked out, and when he wakes up, he, he stands up and looks around, and he sees that Victor is gone. And he finds this note saying, Victor, I was wrong. This is not a, the, our prototype wasn't, wasn't the way to go. And I am needed elsewhere, but you, you're needed where you are right now. Stay there. I'll be fine. Your friend, Frankenstein. And it was so... I don't... That's not exactly what the note said, but that's kind of what... That kind of summarizes what it said. And then, you, and then you see Frankenstein, you know, standing up. It looks like he's getting ready to go on an expedition and all that stuff. And then that's when the credits roll in. So, all in all, it was a good movie. The good things about it are what I'm going to get into. First of all, the acting. The acting was phenomenal. I still think the inspector was kind of like blank faced a, a couple of times. He wasn't, t he didn't typically look like he had a lot of emotion in him, but he wasn't a very major character in this movie. So it, it didn't really, you know, make me that upset. But yeah, Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe and, um, and, uh, James McAvoy, they delivered their, they were just, almost perfect. They were just like, like they just delivered their performances so well that you could just almost picture them being that, those characters in real life. And you would never really expect that. Another good thing was, was the story flow and, and how like it delivers a new take on the whole, you know, what was Vic, what was Frankenstein really up to when he was creating this monster? What did he really want to do? And this movie delivers what I think is the best way to show that, how he wanted to just feel 
like his brother was alive again, and he wanted to feel that by bringing something, some man, back to life. And he wanted to prove that to the world. And he wanted to prove that, you know, that this is just, this is, this is what nature can really do. This is what it, this is what life can really be like. And that to me was a really good, um, like, and, and just not just, in, like, like, not just the style, but just the whole, like, way it was delivered was just so well done. Another thing that I found really good about it was, um, um, the dialogue between all the characters. The, the dialogue was, was like, you could tell that they, there was conflict within each character. Every time they spoke, you could tell there was something going, going wrong inside their mind, knowing that they have to deal with the conflict of, like, what if they're wrong? What if they don't know? Well, what if this is all just make-believe and this is all going on inside my head? And now moving on to the criticisms I had with this movie. I I did think the monster was a bit underdone, too monster-like in my opinion. And yes, I did say too monster-like because let's be honest, Frankenstein the Frankenstein monster is meant to be a monster, but he's not meant to look exactly like this deformed creature. He's just meant to look like a a, a huge man with sewn on body parts. And I just think they just didn't deliver that fully well. Another criticism I had with it was kind of the ending. N not that the ending wasn't bad. It just didn't le It just left me more with more questions and answers. Like, is he planning on making a new a, a new monster? Is he is he planning on like on continuing his studies elsewhere and probably doing something even bigger? I mean, y you don't really know because when he was look he was looking at this sheet of paper before he got up and went on his expedition you could see him at the very end sitting there with this piece of paper but look and he had like a drawings of a brain he had like drawings of an arms and stuff and you and i was thinking those look like plans for something so maybe what they were like i don't know this is just a theory of mine but i was but i it developed it made me think of this theory that maybe the one that the monster they fought was just a prototype of what they called Prometheus. It was just a prototype. And that the real monster is probably going to be made if there is a sequel in the sequel. Like maybe Victor Frankenstein feels like he has to do the rest on his own. He does, he feels like he does, he feels like everyone's going to be standing in his way. So he feels like he just has to do this by himself to, to make the, the true monster. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. And, um, and I, one of my favorite things on the poster, too, was that how they, it says, witness the man, I mean, witness the monster in his creation. They didn't say witness the man in his creation, witness the monster. It was showing that Frankenstein himself was technically the monster and how he was, del he was trying to do something that wasn't meant to be done. Now, if I were to make the ending, I would have done it more like this. The monster is a, the monster doesn't die. They stab it in one of its hearts, but it's not dead. And it, it and it gets up and knocks out both of them and escapes. And so then Victor decides to leave Igor behind while he goes on while he goes on an expedition to find this monster and take it down once and for all. That would have been the ending I would have went with because in the in the original Frankenstein movies from back in like the 60s it was like, like the monster does escape, and it it, it delivers a whole. It, it shows it, it like it, it gets shown what life is all about. But I find that hard to actually happen with this monster because it just doesn't look like something that would be able to experience life itself. Because it just doesn't, it just doesn't look like the kind of thing that would experience something like that. So I would have made the monster look more like a Frankenstein monster and then escape. But all in all, the, the the ending wasn't all that bad. It it wasn't bad. It's just something that was kind of anticlimactic for an ending, and it did have quite a, a quite a cliffhanger. Like maybe there is a sequel they're planning on making soon. Who knows? I mean, it, it looked like they were setting up for a sequel, but I I don't know for sure. So for me, I'm giving this movie a score of eight stars. What kept it from getting up to nine or ten was first of all the monster itself. And secondly, the the weird the weird ending that just left you with more questions than answers. But 
everything else was just practically perfect. The the setting, the plot, the 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 casting, just almost everything else about this movie was just so good and so well done. And I highly highly recommend it to all of you guys. It was very impressive, a great new take on to like that whole just like that whole genre. Excuse me. That whole genre and um Caleb, if you're watching this my friend, watch this movie and I think you might I think it'll be one of your um be in your top 10 um movies of 2015 because that's when it came out. I mean, who knows, it might not, but I I recommend you watch it and I recommend all of you other guys watch it. So, um thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Um be sure to like, um don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends. Peace out.